Many cars get redesigned, but not always in a good way. Hey crowd, I'm Stipe, and welcome to Top Cars TV, where I'll list 10 cars with the worst facelifts ever done. Facelifts that ruined perfectly good cars. New regulations that saved our lives, but left us blind. And corporate faces we would rather face away from. It's all in here, so let's go. Number 10. Let's be real here. The 650S is not a different model. It's just a dramatically updated MP4-12C. It is faster, more emotional, easier to pronounce, and uglier. As if the old and boring looking car had an inbred baby with its bigger mental brother, the P1. The front end was stretched up and down like a chewing gum you had in your mouth during sleep. The rear bumper is supposed to be multi-layered play with negative spaces, like on P1, but it wasn't negative at all, just painted black in places, and the whole thing is out of sync with the rest of the lines. It looks retarded. There is a reason why incest is illegal. Number 9. The 2002 redesigned NSX is not bad looking by any standards. I mean, it's still an NSX, which I think is the prettiest Japanese car ever made. Sorry, Toyota GT2000. However, these few changes that were done definitely knackered its perfection. Gone are the fan favorite, pedestrian gutting pop-up headlights for the safe and modern, somewhat bug-eyed ones. They pulled the focus too far up from its sharp nose. And together with a new and chunky bumper, the sharpness was all but gone. The old one used to continue lines down from the hood and had a bit of a shark angle to it while stretching a lot of the horizontal lines that made it look lower and wider. The new one looks like mayonnaise. Number 8. Gallardo was, at its time, the best-selling Lamborghini ever, okay? 14,000 units sold. That's no small feat. So Lambo really took their time preparing its successor, the Huracan. So much time, in fact, that they had to keep the buyers interested with a gazillion limited special editions that no one has asked for. In its later years, Gallardo was trying so hard to stay relevant, it reminded me of Britney Spears. Everyone just wanted the new Huracan. And then, when it seemed that the wait was over, we got yet another redesign of vanilla Gallardo. This time inspired by the prismatic Aventador. It was unnecessary, not as pretty as the regular LP560, and it made us wait yet another year. Buy me, baby, one more time! No. Number 7. Skoda Octavia is the most boring car in the world. Looks alone have put more children to sleep than a freaking lullaby. Just look at it. It's like they used this traffic sign for inspiration. There is absolutely nothing exciting about it, which is great if you're the sort of person who doesn't want to stand out or simply wants to go unnoticed. You know, smart criminals, spies, businessmen, Matthew Perry, those guys. But the cover was all blown when Skoda introduced a redesign with the split headlights. They look good on Kodiak, not on this. All of a sudden, its ugliness started attracting attention. There's no way the Chernobyl will pass by you unnoticed. And that spelled doom for their owners. Wait, wait, is that Chandler? Number six. MGB is a quintessential British sports car. Light, small, badly built, and covered in chrome details. If you cut its roof off, it's even worthy of an MI6 spy. Pretty little thing for sure. However, with the introduction of the American Safety Bumper Law, it all went wrong. In a rush to comply with it, they simply stuck two huge rubber blocks on the front, which earned it the nickname Sabrina, because boobs. But for the next year, it was ready, a full-on, thoroughly redesigned MGB, with what I can only describe as a fetish gag ball strapped into its mouth. These new bumpers were oversized, badly fitted, and just plain hideous. Also, unsafe. Because of their massive weight, they made the cornering worse, which made you lose it in the corners and die. Safety rules and regulations, my ass. Number five. Ah, the Fiat Multipla. Possibly the ugliest car ever made, which weirdly comes from the land of infinite beauty, Italy. Forgive them, father, for their sins. Still, it sold well, simply because there are many weirdos out there in the world. Those family guys who didn't lose their sense of humor, but possibly lost their ability to see. 
guys who wear sandals over socks, fart in public, and are general oddities and are proud of it. More power to them! Sadly, Fiat caved to the vocal masses who called it ugly and redesigned it to look like any other boring MPV. Without its personality, it just faded into obscurity. And before you call me on that Octavia from a minute ago, remember that it's better being remembered even for your ugliness than being forgotten as if you never existed. Number 4 There was nothing really wrong with Hyundai's first attempt at making a sporty coupe. It wasn't going to steal your heart or your screen's background, but the combination of the price, power, and driving dynamics made it a very compelling package still. Three years into its life, and Hyundai thought they could make it even better by drawing some interesting lines. Well, interesting if you're the sort of person who sees a maggot infected roadkill and thinks, hmm, what's that? Look at its face! There are enough headlights to give you arachnophobia. Intakes have been needlessly enlarged. New ones created. Fog lights have been jammed in there. And voila! A perfectly good car ruined. And you can't even kill it with a roll of newspaper. Believe me, I've tried. Number three. Because of its design alone, Camaro was my favorite modern muscle car. It looked like a concept, and over the years, it just got even sharper and more aggressive. That's good. But then, possibly after many, many drugs, they did this. Oh God. To begin with, they pulled the headlights as far up as possible, leaving some huge gaps beneath them and giving it essentially the eye bags. Then they've completely cut off its nose for that decomposing Michael Jackson look, and then finishing it off with the why so serious cuts in its cheeks. Not even a mother would love that face. However, they did improve the taillights, although they would fit the design better if they were more angular and less like four glowing sphincters. But maybe that's just me. Number two. Oh, oh, oh. oh, this one is bad. It was bad to begin with when it started its life as a Chevy Cavalier, which if you aren't very familiar with, is about as exciting as Jeb Bush's speech. Security interests of this country to get back in the business of creating a more peaceful world. Please clap. Pontiac then gave in to their expert team of 10-year-old designers, thinking it would appeal to the younger audiences. It didn't. Not in sedan or coupe or convertible form. They all looked more like a hyena and less like a car. Plus that tiny little hanging ass with a spoiler in the wrong place just added to the image. But the 2003 redesign really finished it off. Pontiac simply threw some leftover parts and then Whatever was stuck was the new Sunfire. It didn't help the sales, and so two years later, the abomination was finally dead. Good riddance. Number one. Ferrari Testarossa might be the most recognizable Ferrari ever. Who could ever forget those iconic 80s side blades and the wedge-shaped body? I know I never will because it was magnificent. When the 90s came along, it wasn't just the hairstyles that changed the car design did a 180 as well. However, Ferrari wasn't yet ready with the successor, so they just updated my beloved Testi for this next much rounder decade. Gone were the pop-up headlights and bladed taillights, and the wheels were shit, and the sharp nose was swapped for this mess made of pizza dough. Honestly, I've seen more order in Steve Buscemi's front teeth than in this front end. And looking how far this Ferrari has fallen from the most iconic to the dental nightmare that it is, it really is the worst facelift ever. Oh, and in my book, this Ferrari is one of the ugliest Italian cars ever made, along with Huayra and the Alpha 166 and some others. You can watch that here, or you can check this one out here. Your choice. Anyway, comment, express your feelings, like, dislike, subscribe. You know the drill, and I'll see you in the next one.